Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, I would like to share with you some activities we are undertaking uh, at the Agrimat Regional Center uh, in Niamey, Niger. So, our sales agreement, uh, the role of sales agreement in the reduction of crises and uh, over hydroclimatic gases in Western Africa. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. First, I will uh, give you some context about, for example, the 1970s draft and which led to the creation of the Intertest uh, Committee for Draft Control in Israel, SILS, and uh, also some monitoring and early warning activities we are conducting, some risk assessment on coping strategies we are uh, uh, doing with uh, the local communities, and finally some partnership. So this map shows uh, how uh, important was drought in uh, worldwide. And this is the difference between uh, the rainfall, uh, rainfall regime in July and August from com the comparison between the 67 to 98 period and the 48 to 66 period. You can see here that the Sahel area, which is uh, uh, in uh, Western, Western Africa, uh, the particularity of this area, not, not only the severity, but also the extent of the drought in the region. Here in this graph, this is the, uh, the curve of the rainfall in this, evolution of the rainfall in, 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 the, uh, in this, and you see here that uh, uh, starting from the late 1960s, a sharp drop in annual rainfall, which led actually to the drought here, and the persistence for a very long period of this below normal rainfall. Uh, both graph shows the historical background, but this picture is ta was taken in 2009, which means that the droughts are still ongoing in the Sahel, and it is actually uh, a regular occurrence in the Sahel. This is for example, a millet field that was almost destroyed uh, uh, right in the middle of the rainy season in Niger. And this one, this is a completely failed, dried out millet field. So there is nothing to hope from this kind of uh, plot. And this was supposed to be a an irrigated rice plot. Because of lack of water, irrigation water, so the rice plant just dried out. So, as I said in the beginning, because of the occurrence and the persistence of the drought in this region, uh, the uh, head of state of the, uh, the region decided to create an institution to handle this issue. So, the Permanent Interstate Committee for Drought Control in the Sahel was created by nine member states in order uh, uh, to, to contribute to achieving sustainable food security because all the time there were uh, uh, famine that were occurring and uh, call were launched to international community. So the local government decided to, uh, to, decided, uh, to get together and tackle this issue by creating uh, this, uh, this committee. And so, the objective was to not only build capacity at national level or member state, uh, and all, but also to produce and disseminate information so, uh, to, to various decision makers so that uh, crisis, uh, this kind of crisis, uh, uh, so to go uh, like it was being said to the, uh, in this uh, uh, forum, not only to handle crises, but also to uh, prevent them and to manage them effectively. Here is how the Agreement Regional Center uh, is, uh, is functioning. 
here at the center you have a regional center where you have experts in various disciplines going from meteorology to hydrology, agriculture, crop protection, and animal hazard. So this multidisciplinary uh, team is able to handle all kinds of uh, uh, crises related to food security. We have also at national level what we call national uh, agreement uh, teams, also composed of uh, technical services for in those different disciplines. And there is a, an interaction between the regional center and the national uh, services, namely in terms of pro uh, collecting uh, ground data and sharing also satellite data that were uh, collected at the regional center, and also producing and disseminating information at various level, and also providing training to national uh, uh, services. Of course, we have also partners at the international level who provide, who help us not only uh, technically but also with funding. So, the monitoring system actually evolved. We have a different, uh, uh, we have a regular uh, uh, cycle of activities to monitor the system. For example, starting from May, which is the beginning of the rainy season, we come off with a seasonal forecast of rainfall and river, river discharges. And then, after the installation of the rainy season, we monitor the rainfall situation, and also we monitor the, the sowing and the crop water satisfaction. So, for that, we use not only field observations, but also our meteorological models based on climate data. And also we monitor the pasture situation. And this is done not only, uh, again, through uh, ground observation, but also we use satellite images, that, such as the vegetation indices. And also we forecast based on our meteorological modeling, the yield of various crops and also of pastures. And all these products actually contribute to identify the risk zones during the rainy season. And after that, we have also some uh, harvest ass assessment mission, which we do also with partners like FAO, uh, WFP, and FuseNet, and national uh, uh, food security offices, to find out on the ground whatever we are, the conclusion we, are, we drew from the meteorological, agrometeorological monitoring the ground truth, uh, what is the ground truth about it. And after that, this helps us to identify not only the, the risk zone, but also to target uh, the building of our populations. Here is a map of uh, seasonal forecast of river discharges. In this map, we can see that river, this is the Niger River that covers more than uh, 10 countries in West Africa. And we see difference, different basin, sub basin of the river where the likelihood of either uh, below normal or above normal discharge are expected during the coming season. So this is a first uh, indicator and a first warning uh, about the availability of water resources. The same thing is done also for rainfall. And here is an example of rainfall monitoring map. And which this kind of map are produced every 10 day. So we closely monitor how the rainfall situation is evolving. Here in the red are area where the current rainfall situation is much lower than expected. So this is also the first indicator of maybe a trough a setting up. If this kind of situation continues two or three decades in the same area, this is the first sign of alarm of a bad situation evolving. The rainfall monitoring also is done using satellite imaging. So it is the same use we are making because of the, the ground observation are very scarce, so we also use satellite information to monitor rainfall. This is, for example, uh, some output of a, a, an algorithm model where you can assess how late or how early the season has started, so how the planting of the crops was done, and uh, also the, water crop, the crop water satisfaction level, and finally a year forecasting map.
where you can see some areas where the yield are expected to be below normal. So this is also an indication, an early warning of a bad food security situation evolving. We also monitor the natural vegetation because the West African Sahel also is a major area of pastoralism. So the animals also, the grazing areas also, it is important to give an idea to herders where the grazing areas are available and where there is some a problem in the evolution of the, the, the natural vegetation. For example, the situation here has evolved. It was bad uh, toward the end of July, but we see that during the August month, some improvement was done, but still there were some, there remained some areas where still the vegetation was not optimal. The vegetation was not. And this is the right middle of the season, so one can expect that here, some problem will be experienced uh, during this particular year. And these are synthesis map drawn from the regular uh, decadal monitoring. And toward the end of the season, we come up with this kind of map. And we see here how uh, the natural vegetation and the crop situation in the, uh, sorry. in the western part of the Sahel, the situation was relatively good. But some areas where the situation was bad, and here it is a moderate situation. This was in 2009, and here it is in 2010. So you see the contrast between the two years, and uh, okay, thank you. So you see the contrast between here, and this is how actually we uh, closely monitor the evolution of the situation and inform decision makers so they can start taking measures wherever the situation is expected to be. Uh, well, such as here in 2009. We, there are also other uh, disasters that occur in the Sahel. Uh, just right about two hours ago, there was a presentation about the desert locus. Our center also monitors the desert locus situation, not only in terms of identifying uh, the optimum uh, areas of the growth, but also we have training programs. So, to, uh, where we, we teach students how to identify the biology and uh, the various uh, techniques to co control those pests. These are our, some laboratories here where students can uh, learn how to identify or how to use various type of chemicals, including the uh, biopesticides here, uh, to reduce the environmental impact of uh, the pesticides. We also, uh, another hazard is floods. So besides monitoring and learning, we also do some risk assessment. For example, this is a map of the city of Niamey. And uh, this map was drawn uh, about four years ago to, to show the likelihood of uh, flooding in the, uh, the Niamey city. And this situation, in the dark blue area, this is the normal course of the river. But in lighter blue, it is the possible areas where flooding can occur. And these are mostly populated areas in the center city. So this situation actually happened last year in August. So we had already this map on hand and it was already uh, forecasted uh, there is a likelihood of risk of the flooding in these areas. Besides also early warning and monitoring, we also uh, work with communities to uh, 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 identify adaptation strategies so that they can better cope with drought. For example, we here these are water conservation techniques so that in the case of a prolonged drought spell, the crops can withstand a prolonged drought spell because of water conservation. We have also some crop varieties, uh, droughts, uh, resistant crop varieties, uh, and better product can produce better in, in drought conditions. Here are in pastoral areas also water conservation and grass seeding so that you know, uh, we can save some pastures or regenerate, help regenerate some of the grass in them and have better pastures. Of course, all these activities we do uh, in the center, but we have various partnerships partnership at international level 
partnership at the regional level and also in various disciplines. And of course, we have also financial partners from EU, USAID, FDB, COAS, etc. etc. In terms of perspectives, of course, we intend to continue with what we are doing now, but we also want to, uh, to improve uh, in our uh, with precision and the accuracy of our monitoring tools. And also, uh, so for that, we are involved in various international uh, scientific initiatives. And also, uh, besides uh, regular nine member countries, uh, we are also expanding our activities now to the ECOWAS member countries, which is actually the whole of West Africa. Of course, here, uh, our center is, in fact, a bridge between uh, the technical partners with whom we develop technologies, monitoring tools, and also the national services, which we train, and also with farmers with whom we develop uh, coping strategies. With that, I thank you for your attention. Question? Um, I'll take some questions. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. It's possible. Okay, thank you very much.